Okay, hello there guys. I'm Infinite Gamer. I'm going to be playing Survive Island and I'm going to be going through the uh, fire making and fire starting tutorial. I've had a few people ask me to do it, they're struggling to actually set a fire. So, first thing you want to do is you're going to want to collect firewood. Now, to collect firewood, uh, which is this, all you need to do is find a trunk of a tree, put down the tree, and you simply keep chopping it. And then, once you've chopped it down enough, you will get firewood. Okay. So, once you've got firewood, what you want to do then is wherever you want your fire to be. So, I'm going to start my fire there, and as you can see, that has now became a wood pile. So, uh, once you've done that, that is the very start of your fire. Now, if you go into craft mode, you will see these 10 nodes surrounding the fire. Those 10 nodes are where you are going to place these stones. Now, something to remember. <clears throat> you want this fire to work properly, it needs to be small stones. It cannot be... Um, I've bought some of these over already, but just to show you, it cannot be a stone slates or stone bar or chiseled stone, anything like that. It has to be a small stone. Okay, so uh, your fire needs just randomly dotted around the place. So you want to place each of these, one of these, into each node. Okay, and once you do this, uh, demonstrate to you, pop that there, okay, so nothing's happened, just looks like a ring of stones, right? Okay, so if I was to move, I was to remove the slate stone and place that stone, bosh, there you are, turns into a proper, a proper fire, a proper fire circle, so that is the base of it. Now, once you have done that, the next thing you're going to want to do is get is a fin stick. Okay, and to get those, all you need to do is chop up a branch. Once you chop up a branch, you'll get a stick. If you get a large stick <coughs> or a long stick, uh, just cut that again and it'll break up into two of these smaller sticks. Then what you want to do is you want to cut on each node. Now, if you cut this node, it will turn it into a handle, which means you can't turn it into the fin sticks. So I always recommend when doing this to start with the middle node. That way you can't mess it up. Okay, so this, there, there, and then presto, you've got your fin sticks. So that's one of the fire starting tools over there. The next one you need is a drill board. Now, to get a drill board, aim again, except you've got a drill on the one node, there you are. Uh, to do the cutting and drilling, you need the stone knife as well, so you know. Now, that away, okay, actually no, I didn't want to pop that away. Okay, so the next thing that you need is tinder, and you need to place the tinder next to the fire. Now, this is a simple piece of tinder from a coconut. You get them when you break open the green shells for the coconuts or the empty shells that you've eaten you can put like I've just done there and you get another piece of tinder or two pieces. So what you want to do then is take that piece of tinder and place that there. Now when it comes down to tinder there is another tinder you can make. Unfortunately the game I've loaded up I can't find any of the trees to get the broad leaves that you need. Um, but you, uh, certain trees, uh, I think it's the mangrove trees, those sort of ones, you can, uh, when you cut them down, get broad leaves from them. Now, if you get four broad leaves, when you've got four, come over to a, a stone block, which is also turned into a crafting table when you go to craft mode. Place each broad leaf down, four of them, one in each slot, each node, and then it will come up saying that you can plate them. So you just hold down for each one, plate them, and it turns into tinder. Now, 
The reason I'm telling you this is because each tinder has a different kind of burning point. The coconut tinder burns uh, burn point is 68, whereas the uh, ficus tinder, which is the one that you get from the broad leaves, that actually burns at 64, which means that you only need to reach a temperature of 64 to get it to start to smoke, and then you go into the next stage, which I will go into a bit more. Um, yep. Okay, so what you want to do then is pick up your fin stick and your drill board. You need them in your hand. Doesn't matter which hand. Uh, place your tinder anywhere near the fire or inside the fire and then just hold down E on that little fire icon. And then you see this animation. Okay, now this brings up the sort of little mini game for uh, starting a fire. I personally love. And as you can see, there is a two yellow lines. The first yellow line is the temperature that you've got to get the tinder up to to start to smoke and then you go into the next stage. Top yellow line, that is the temperature you need to get the fire to so that the fire will start. Um, certain pieces of wood that you use as uh, fuel in the fire, um, for instance I've used just one block of firewood which takes up to 150 to get it to set a light, but if you put sticks in there, um, you can put sticks or uh, fire stub, uh, wood stubs, um, you can place tinder in there, but I noticed when you do that, um, the fire point is actually around 70 rather than 150 like it is there. When it's at 70, you can't actually light a fire. Um, it goes into some weird sort of uh, bugged out glitch now. I'm not sure if it is a bug or if it's meant to be uh, pointed out that you've not got enough fuel to start the fire. <coughs> okay, so what you want to do then is... Uh, oh, actually, something that I've missed out. Um, when placing the fire, you want to take into account the fire, uh, the wind speed which would be that. So at the moment I've got 73% wind speed. Whereas if I run over to this uh, boulder over here and check again, the wind speed's dropped down to 35. If I go between these two, it's dropped down to 4.3. So as you can tell, certain things or placing the fire around objects actually reduces the wind speed. Now, the reason I'm mentioning wind speed is it's something that you need to take into account. What you realistically want to aim for is around a 25% wind speed because that actually helps when going into the second stage of starting a fire. Um, which I will demonstrate and explain a bit more once I get to that. So, now, what you want to do to start off is scroll the mouse wheel. You can scroll it really fast if you want, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. I'll do it just as a, a, a nice simple roll. Once you get that to the top, then start to hold down X. Give it a second while it's at the top and then loose off. Once you get that to the bottom, hold down again. And release off. And then hold down again. And I'm just resetting the hand movement. And then you should then go into the next stage. Now, the reason I say to loose off of S once you get to the top and after a second is because um, holding down S is actually applying pressure onto the drill board and onto the fin stick. Now, if you keep holding down S um, while spinning the stick constantly, and this is something that I learned out and somebody pointed out to me, it actually damages uh, the wood board, uh, the drill board and the fin stick a lot more. So it benefits to just hold it till it gets to the top, give it a second or two and then loose off and it reduces the amount of damage um, that you're doing to your, your tools so they can last longer. Now what I'm doing here is I've gone to the next stage, this is once you get the tinder to smoke, and you then just click the left stick to basically blow on it and 
um, you know, try to get the tinder to flame up. Um, now, this is the reason why I said about having around a 25% wind speed, because that actually benefits you when it gets to this point. Because you've got a 25% wind speed, it's actually adding oxygen into the fire already. It's actually helping you start the fire, whereas if you've got a 0% or 1% wind speed, that's sort of neutral, so it's not good, but it's not bad. Um, if you go too far over 25% wind speed, it actually gets to be fairly difficult to, um, to light the fire, which I've experienced before. And you simply just keep pressing the left, uh, left mouse button. Uh, once you've done it enough, you'll see the two bars going up. Um, actually, before I, before I actually make this fire, uh, which I hope it doesn't do now, um, going from left to right, I will point out what each of these icons are. So, the very first one on the left. Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay, so, that buggered up. But, uh, for the sake of it, what I will do is... Oop, no, wrong thing. Um, I'm not going to place the stone thrones because I don't want to have to run around collecting them again. Uh, piece of Um, so, uh, as you're going to notice here, you can actually start a fire with just a wood pile, you don't need the stones. But the benefit of having the stones is, if you leave your you leave your fire burning and it goes out, it stays, the circle stays there, the fire just extinguishes, and then all you've got to do is add wood to it and that's it. Whereas, mm, doing it like this, it's I don't find it as beneficial. Also, I think with it having the stones around it, it actually increases how long fire stays lit for. Um, pointing out earlier when I said you want to make sure they're all small stones to create this sort of proper campfire circle, uh, that's because if you don't have it like this when the fire extinguishes all of the stones that were placed around it then get flung off and you have to rebuild it all again. So having it like this keeps it like it, stays like it then even if the fire goes out. But just for a... Uh, Come on. Yep. Okay, so just for the sake of it, uh, just to point out what they are, the icons are. Okay, so you have uh, the first icon going from left to right is the uh, spin speed. Um, and then you've got uh, the pressure on the board. You then have the sun icon, which is the first one at the bottom, which is... Uh, basically the environment's temperature, so the standard temperature, ambient temperature at the moment. So you have the one on the left next to the um, side. You then have the, the temperature, temperature balance caused and then by the one oxygen to the level, right of that, which is the tender um, temperature. You then have the temperature balance caused by wetness. Uh, which is something I will show you in just a second. Um, you also then have the fire icon, which is the fuel's burn point. That's a very top yellow line icon. And then you have the smoke icon, which is the temperature for the tinder, the smoke, which is the first yellow line and the icon on the right. The water droplet that you can see all the way to the right, that icon, you can just about see a little bit of blue underneath it. Now, if your tools are wet and that actually you'll see the blue line come really far down um, when that's really far down you have to actually spin um, to dry your tool um, and until you've depleted and dried the tool fully so gotten rid of all that blue bar you won't be starting to raise the temperature of the drill board um, also to take into note the rain when it is raining do not attempt to try and light a fire um, because it won't happen you'll just keep seeing that uh, uh, the water the water bar constantly refilling um, I think that's actually using the tinder all the way over there so I never realized that it would be that far away um, I the dew level seems to be quite low. That is the first time I've ever seen that. 
Um, when it comes to the scrolling of the mouse wheel to spin, um, some people have said that you can increase the um, increase the actual mouse wheel speed on your computer, and that will actually help with this. Now, as you can see, I am actually struggling to get this up. Now, I believe that is due to the wind. Um, and I think that is the reason why my O2 uh, marker there is actually down. Actually has a blue bar going down. So I might not actually be able to light this fire. Struggling to get it past this point. And yeah, it's actually not going to let me light a fire. Now, wind speed is up to 75%. I believe that that is the reason um, I cannot light it at the moment. Um, so as you can see, it is still uh, it is still going down. At the moment, the uh, the actual temperature of outside is. Um, is quite low as well. Normally you would want it to be in the orange at least slightly or just below the orange. Um, oh, and I might be able to show you now water level. So as you can see the water droplets on the right and you see it's sort of pulsating so luckily because it isn't full I'm, uh, I'm actually able to knock it back and keep it going but as it is raining more getting heavier I'm actually using all of my spin speed on reducing and yeah becoming impossible to light a fire now so okay well while it's raining I'm not going to be able to do any more um, I mean once you've got the fire lit you can then just keep throwing in firewood, you can throw in the drill boards, you can throw in coconut shells, you can throw in sticks, you can't throw in branches. Um, and then another thing to take into account is that the more wood you have piled on your fire, so for instance let's, let's get this up to full. Um, so I think that's, I think that's the max amount I can have. Check. Oh no, I can go further. Oh, there we are. So that's a max. Basically, once you've got the fire full like that, it's going to burn a hell of a lot hotter. Which means if you was to place something next to it to cook it, it will cook it quicker. So keep an eye on whatever you're putting on there. Also, standing too close to it when it is too hot um, will actually burn you. And it will raise your temperature and you'll start to get heat stroke. So when you've got a full fire, make sure you're standing quite far away from it. Don't stand close to it for too long. Um, and if you've got a low fire, um, in fact, I think if you've only got the logs on there and you can't see any of the branches, that, uh, that fire will only be embers. It won't actually be a lit fire, so you can't cook from it and it will produce hardly any heat and hardly any uh, light as well. So, thank you all for coming along, um, and I hope this tutorial helps you, helps you guys out. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if there's anything that you would like me to cover, anything else that you may be struggling with, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment, uh, either asking me to do another tutorial on something, or even if you just think you've got some tips for me maybe, if there's something I've missed out. Uh, thank you all again. I am Infinite Gamer, and I will catch you next time. See you later, guys.